Hey YouTube, thank you for uh, watching season two, the uh, final episode of this series of uh, Jay's 997 uh, Turbo Major Engine Out Repair. This uh, video will cover the uh, retiming of the camshafts. Uh, he pinned the camshaft to prevent the sleeve from uh, spinning out of position uh, the last time, but uh, had a deviation of 3 and 6.75 degrees, which is acceptable, but uh, the outer edge of, uh, of that. But uh, he ran into issue with the uh, timing chain coming off while rotating the crankshaft. Uh, it took him a long time to figure out uh, the problem. Uh, so uh, please like and subscribe and uh, big thanks to Jay for sharing and uh, documenting this uh, huge project. Uh, thanks. Bank 2 is set with the timing plates that was ever taken apart. I'm going to rotate this thing. I don't know if you'd notice the chain slack there. It just took up. This is requiring a lot of effort to turn. Kind of my issue there. That last snap you heard is essentially this exhaust cam uh, spinning on me. Got the top intake locked in. I'm going to try to adjust the exhaust and uh, lock that back in with the plate. Got the timing set with the plates for bank one. I broke the exhaust bolt off to adjust this because this was turning for some odd reason. So the uh, cam lobes are facing each other. Plates are in. Pop these out. And I'm going to give it one rotation. Keep an eye on this chain here. See it's starting to come off. Back on again. Okay, that's one full rotation. It didn't pop off like I thought it would. I'm gonna give it a, another quick crank, make sure it's good and tight. Give it another rotation. Keep an eye on the chain. See, it's coming off. Back on. Yeah, now it just it just spun itself. Basically lost lost time. Got the timing set for bank one. Pull the uh, timing blocks out. The valves are, uh, intake lobes are facing and the exhaust lobes are facing each other. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give it one full rotation. Keep an eye on this uh, chain here and the sound. Let's 
see it starting to come off there. That's the clanking noise I was describing. So I already made a full rotation. So that was 720 degrees. Back on uh, timing for bank one. Going to try to explain to set your timing on a 997 turbo. Essentially, I've got a dial indicator set in there. Um, it's in the cylinder, uh, not making contact, and then I zeroed it out. So you, you go around. As soon as it hits the degree wheel, you log that location. On the back side, I've got a degree wheel. I'll show you that in one second. I've got some other marks here, uh, just to know when I'm coming up on those marks, I can slow down on the uh, downward stroke. So you, again, you mark the degree wheel as it comes up and as it goes down and loses contact with this, with this gauge. Then we'll go ahead and. Uh, record those two numbers. I've got bank two down and bank two up marked here. I was having some trouble with bank two, the up part, uh, so I, I checked it, as you can see here, four times, and that um, 34 degrees is where it needed to be. And on the up stroke, I'm sorry, on the down stroke, it was at um, 28 degrees. Add those two together, you get 62. Divide in half, you get 31. So my true top dead center off of the gauge is essentially three degrees is my zero. So I'm not gonna move the wheel because these are um, just kind of rigged in here on the back where the flywheel should go. So that essentially is my true top dead center. I've got the uh, Porsche timing plates put on here. So these are numbered, um, and if you can see the numbers on here, Top one is number three, maybe not so much. The bottom one's number four. So you essentially just bolt these on, locking your cams in position. Lock your cams in position and then tighten down these bolts. This one's 37 foot pounds, so that's 22 foot pounds. This is plus 90 that's plus 110 so my timing the reason I'm doing this is it was off four degrees here and almost seven degrees on bank one so I've got some new replaceable bolts I'm gonna crack these bolts off uh, insert the new ones you grab onto the, um, the marks here and here with a 30 millimeter wrench adjust them so your timing plates fit once you have that plates uh, locked in Go ahead and tighten these down as I said earlier and then you add your angle torque and then you would do the same thing on the other bank. I'm going to go around and um, set up bank two first. I'm also going to, before I set bank two, I'm going to check for top dead center on bank one to make sure it's in the same place. Um, I've read some forums that it's not always in the same place. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up next. All right, just a quick follow-up video. I've uh, used the dial gauge and found a true top dead center on bank one. Essentially, it came out the same as bank two. I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, dial gauge now. Kind of made a little uh, apparatus here to hold the dial gauge in place. Uh, I've got one bolt holding it to the valve cover attachment point, and this kind of just flows free, so I had to use a makeshift uh, C-clamp to hold that down. Uh, the timing notch, I don't know if you can see that, but it's essentially three degrees off from that notch. Uh, 
which when I timed it the first time I was four degrees off a bank one I'm sorry four degrees off a of bank two and 6.67 on bank one so um, all the scribbling I'll kind of briefly go through so bank two and bank one that was a downstroke Bank one and bank two, that was the upstroke. So as I said earlier, you add these two numbers together, then divide by two. Uh, those numbers were basically 34 and 28 equals 62. Half of that is 31. So you can go 31 backwards from this number or 31 uh, forwards from this number, which essentially is three degrees because I was at 34 here. I just went back to three degrees and that essentially is where my um, my little wire indicator is telling me that true top dead center is so uh, my next thing to do is to um, these uh, Porsche plates are numbered you can see that's horizontal so this is gonna snap in here I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten up these screws I, I have not pre-fitted these so they're probably um, not going to fit just right because I have to, as I said earlier, loosen up the uh, cam screws and then um, back the camshafts up for these plates to fit in now that I'm actually at true top dead center. So essentially these cams will free spin once you release the bolts. And that's these two bolts here and I've given you the torque specs for those. Once I have those done, I'll rotate uh, 360 degrees and do bank two. So bank one at top dead center, these cam lobes face each other. For bank two, the lobes face away each other. So essentially they face, um, I'll send. An, I'll do another video for that when I get to it. So I think that's it. Let me go ahead and uh, crack the cam bolts off and retorque them. Okay, I'm going to do the angle torque on bank one. The uh, Porsche plates are locked in, rotated this. 360 degrees, initial torque was 22, 37 on this one, so it's 22 plus another 90 degrees. It's 90. Switch up my bit and go 110 on the top one. Again, these wrenches are simply the counter. Got the angle torque wrench set to 110. Okay, 115 will give you plus or minus 5%. Not sure if I mentioned this in one of the previous videos, but this bank one, I was getting some chain slippage. I've got a video documenting that. But the fix, uh, got a hold of James over at Shark Works and uh, gave me some information on these um, chain tensioners. So, so, install these. There's a painted line on there, or actually I painted it, that will uh, tell you when it's got enough pressure against the uh, tensioner. The other one's up here. You can see the painted line on that one too. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off now that the engine is timed and torqued. 
put the chain tensioners back in with the uh, oil feed lines to them and then uh, valve covers. Just wanted to take a short video on addressing getting the scavenge pump back onto the engine. There's a gear driven scavenge pump in this little housing. It's connected directly to the crank. It's got a star shaped gear. It almost looks like an E Torx. I'm sorry, just like a Torx, maybe a Torx 40. Not that many teeth though. So uh, essentially, you would hang this manifold off of the three hoses here to get it get it in place. Um, obviously the bottom coolant elbows would be off at that point and uh, what I did was um, I just used a piece of wire to pull this uh, elbow which comes right out of the engine over enough so this thing can move back and forth freely and then it's just a matter of uh, just doing minimal rotations on that scavenge pump gear until it slides on. It doesn't require any force when you're in there. You can't you can't hammer this thing on there and force it to mate up. So it's just a little bit of back and forth and finesse, but having it held from the top essentially alleviates you from having to fight the full weight of the, the part and then trying to get it aligned at the same time. And, and this thing here really messes you up too unless you take it off the engine, which I didn't want to do. So with this out of the way, it was good to go. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned off all the old uh, gasket sealant. This is a Draybond. I think it's a 1209 or 1210. I'll go look at the tube in a second. But I guess in California you can't buy a chlorinated brake cleaner, which is essentially pure acetone. But that didn't seem to work. I had acetone I bought from Home Depot. It had little effect on it. I ended up resulting to, uh, resorting to an old school method. This guy here. So uh, seems like 87 unleaded works wonders. You, you go ahead and um, you know microfiber tiles seems to be the most effective. I've got these you know clean T-shirts but that didn't work, and I used a plastic scraper. This is all you know fairly clean now. So this is ready to go back on. So essentially you uh, get as much of the heavy material off with the uh, plastic scraper, hit it with the uh, gasoline and the rag, and then go back and uh, scrape it. It comes off kind of like a gel, maybe like a wallpaper stripper, I guess. So these guys are cleaned off, and here's the uh, special Draybond 1209. Um, this guy comes with a little dispensing tip. Uh, one important thing to remember, you're just going to go along this outside edge, stopping here, following it along here. You don't need to go around the bolt holes. The only thing you do need to go around is this oil passage here. Very important to uh, seal around that completely and then follow it back. Stop there. That's essentially it for the uh, sealing and the valve covers. Perhaps forgot to mention going around this bolt here too. This is the only hole you have to circle other than the um, oil passage hole here. So go ahead and put this on the engine and hope for the best. Once again sealing up the valve covers. A one millimeter coating or a bead of the um, Draybond 1209 all the way around around this oil passage. Center of the valve cover around the top of the valve cover and around this uh, this bolt here, or bolt hole. Okay, completed the rear main seal repairs, adjusted the timing, and uh, 
uh, replace the uh, leaking power steering lines, as well as the uh, power steering lines of the slave. Lined up, but essentially it's ready to go back in. <laughs> 